What's going on everyone? This is Jay Patel and in this video, we are going to learn how the word embeddings are trained via word to vec model. Now, this is going to be a two part video. In the first part, we are going to look at the theory and the next part, we are going to write a code in Python completely from scratch, which means that we will initialize the word embedding vectors uh, with random values and then train them using word to vec technique and see the result. And we will plot the graph, which looks something like this. Here you can see that the words such as boy, man, king, prince are close to each other and the words such as daughter, woman, queen are close to each other. So I'm very excited for this video and if you're new to this channel consider subscribing because I upload machine learning videos in which I teach mathematical detail theory and then we implement the same in Python from scratch. So hit the red subscribe button and let's not wait further, let's get started with this video. To train word embeddings via word to vec we use neural network. Now you know how neural network works. We first randomly initialize weights, then we train the model, then after training the model, the weights adjust its values appropriately to give a proper output prediction. Now what we are going to do is after training the model, we are going to extract these weights and these weights are going to act as word embeddings. We first try to solve a fake problem or a dummy problem. Now what is this fake problem? This problem is, is something that we do not care about. We create a simple neural network model to solve a problem which we do not care about. What we care about are the adjusted values of the weights that are obtained after training the model. And thus we extract these weights which will act as word embedding. All this will be clear as we go further. To train this dummy model, we create a corpus of data. Now what is a corpus? Corpus is basically a collection of written text. That's it. It can be novels, it can be articles, literatures, news, anything any collection of written text that can give us context behind the words. For example, I have few sets of sentences. These sentences are as follows. The future king is a prince. The daughter is a princess. Son is a prince. Only a man can be a king. If we read these sentences, we can obtain some context behind the words such as king because a sentence says only a man can be a king. We can get the context like a man and king might be associated with each other. Now we want our computer to understand the similar context from this data. So in our dummy model, we take two words. One is a source word and one is a target word. Now source word is an input to the model and target word is an output to the model. The dummy application is as follows. We pass a single input word to the model and we make our model to predict a single output word. For example, we can pass this word future as an input to the model and make the, our model predict a word such as king, which means our model will predict one word based on a word that is given as an input. So to make the dummy application, we need to get the pairs of words in which the first word can act as source and the other as a target. So to generate the pairs of words, what we do is first we remove the stop words from the data. Now what is stop words? Stop words are the words that occur often in a language or in a sentence, but does not add any meaningful information to our model. For example, the words the, is, are, can, occur often in a language or in a sentence but do not offer any meaningful information to the model. So we will remove those words. Then we will create bigrams. Now what is a bigram? Bigram are two consecutive words occurring in a sentence. For example, if our sentence is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, then the bigrams for this sentence will be the quick, quick brown, brown fox, fox jumps, etc. So we'll get the bigrams from every sentence. For example, if my first sentence is future king prince, then I will create two biograms from this sentence. First will be future king and the second will be king prince. So once we have these biograms, the first word in the biogram will act as an input to our neural network and the second word will act as the output label for our neural network. So we will pass a single word at a time and make a prediction for that single word. Now as we want to pass words as an input, we cannot directly pass word as a text. We need to convert these words into one hot representation. Now if you do not know about one hot vectors, then check out my previous video by clicking on the upper i button. So we passed one word. Let's say our first word that we are going to pass as an input to the model is king. So we convert the word king into one hot vector and we pass this one hot vector as an input. Now the number of neurons in the input layer should be equal to the number of words in our vocabulary. Now based on this input word, a model will try to make an output prediction. 
Now, before training the model, our model does not know what should be the output prediction, thus it might predict any word. And then that prediction will be compared with the actual output label that is Prince. And thus we will tell the model that the actual output label for the word King should have been Prince. So adjust your weight in such a way that if I give you a word King as an input, you must predict the word Prince as an output. So the weights will be adjusted using backpropagation. And then let's say if we pass another word daughter as an input, then we make our model to predict the word princess as an output. Now, obviously the, now obviously if the model is not trained, it might not be able to predict this word princess. So again, with the help of backpropagation, it will adjust its weights in such a way that the output prediction for the input word daughter should be princess. Thus, by training this model in such a way, that a model can get the contextual idea behind the words. For example, if we tell the model that, hey, if the input word is daughter, then you must predict princess, then the model will get the contextual idea that the daughter and princess are related to each other and it will adjust its weights accordingly. Now, you might say that, hey, Jay, if the input word is daughter, then the output word can be any word. The output word can be woman because woman is also related to daughter. Princess is also related to daughter. It might be queen also. Any word can be an output prediction. And you are right. That's why this is a dummy model. We do not care about this application. The only thing that we care about are the adjusted weights. My, now our data set might have these biograms where for the single input word daughter, there are multiple labels. And that's why the accuracy of this model is not gonna be good. But we do not care about that. The only thing that we care about are the weights. After the weights are adjusted, the model will realize that daughter and princess are related, daughter and woman are related, daughter and beautiful are related. Now every neuron in the output layer correspond to one word in our vocabulary. For example, this neuron correspond to word beautiful, this neuron correspond to word boy. And there are weight values associated with every neuron and thus for with every word. The weights values associated with the word beautiful are marked in red here. To get the word embeddings, all we need to do is just extract these weights values because these weights values are specific for that corresponding word. In our example, for the word beautiful, there are four different weight values. Now a vector of these four different weight values will be our word embedding for the word beautiful. For example, if this weight is W1, W2, W3 and W4, then the word embedding for the word beautiful will be given by W1, W2, W3 and W4, which is a vector of size 4. Similarly, the word embedding for the word daughter will be obtained by extracting the corresponding weight values of the corresponding neuron. Now, the size of the word embedding vector depends on the number of neurons that are there in the hidden layer. In this example, the number of neurons in the hidden layer are 4, thus the size of the word embedding is 4. If we have n number of neurons in the hidden layer, then we will have word embedding vector of size n. Thus, to summarize everything, what we do is we create a dummy application and that dummy application is like we pass a single word as an input and we make our model to predict another single word as an output. And there will be only one hidden layer in this model and the number of neurons in that hidden layer will determine the size of the word embedding vector. Once the model is trained, we, we extract the corresponding weights for the corresponding words. Now in our dummy application, what we did is that we only passed one word as an input. What we can also do is we can also pass two words as an input and make a model to predict a single output word. And not only this, we can also pass three words as an input and make our model to predict a single output word. And then we will extract the weights of this layer and which will act as the word embedding vectors. Now this technique is called continuous bag of words. There is another technique called skipgram in which we do the opposite. We pass one input word and we make the model to predict two output words. Both these techniques are a part of Word2Vec. So Word2Vec consists of these two techniques through which word embeddings are obtained. Now in the next video, we will practically code this in Python from scratch. So I hope you found this video valuable. If so, please hit the like button as it took me a lot of time to make this video. And let's jump on to the next video where we will implement it. So I will see you in the next one.